Now let's take a look at some more enumeration using SMTP and DNS. Those in themselves have all sorts of goodies to offer us. So we know that SMTP is the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. What that means is you use it to send email. So if you are a client using, well not Outlook, because Outlook is, uses TCP 135 Remote Procedure Call, or Remote Procedure Call over HTTP. But if you're like a, a non-Microsoft email client, and you're not web-based either, you are probably going to use SMTP to send email to somebody. And it usually goes to your email server by SMTP, and your email server uses SMTP to forward it to their email server, where it sits in their mailbox until they go fetch it. So we can use SMTP to validate email addresses, see if email addresses exist, because we want to try to fish them, spearfish them, whale them. So there are three built-in commands that are excellent for enumeration. Verify, which validates that an email address actually exists. Expand, which takes a, a mailing list and breaks it out into all of the uh, users that are part of that mailing list. Or recipient too, which um, you specify who is the recipient of a message. And if they don't exist, it'll come back and say user doesn't exist. So the different SMTP servers may respond differently to the commands for valid and invalid users. Um, some of the systems, it depends on the admin, they've turned off verify and expand uh, specifically to um, counteract uh, this kind of attack. But you can't turn off recipient too, because otherwise they'll never be able to receive email for somebody. So we can directly interact with an SMTP server using Telnet or something else similar to just find out if email addresses actually exist. And there are tools like NetScan Pro, SMTP User and Noom um, that we can use to try all of these. So here's an example of SMTP User and Noom. Let me just zoom in. I'm saying, and this is in Kali Linux as you can see, SMTP-User-Noom. Uh, TAC, uh, CAPM verify. And then what I do is I have a list. Uh, I have a list of possible users that I want you to try. And then I'm doing it against a particular um, SMTP server, against a particular email server, 192.168.91.130. So please try to see from this list that I'm guessing, because I've collected business cards and I've done other kinds of um, uh, enumeration and some reconnaissance and stuff, and I have a, a list of what I think are probably uh, users on this thing, and I want you to try it. And so now it's going to go down the line, and it's just going to it's going to try using the verify method, but it could also try the recipient to method, and then it's going to try like five worker threads at a time. It's going to look in my list and just see if they exist. And so there's like one target here. It's going after 25 different users that are in this list here. It's going against TCP 25, which is of course what SMTP uses. After five seconds, it's going to give up on you. And it finds out from this list that these people, these accounts, and some of them are for services, do indeed exist. So in theory, you could send email to these. Now some of these are, of course, no one's going to listen to. But there might be, I mean, like there's a, an actual email account called user. And so we might be able to send an email to this person. Or if we could find other uh, things. Now, most of these look like um, system or service accounts. So probably there's nothing going to respond to email that way. But you can look for this and go, aha, phishing targets. And you never know. I mean, you might send phishing emails to any of these because you might have a person monitoring this. Who knows? So that is using, so that is how we use SMTP for enumeration. Try to find possible email accounts. And you notice the at company.com doesn't exist here. That's fine. It was just trying to find users. You just append at company.com afterwards. Now DNS enumeration, of course, we want to get DNS records. And from Network Plus, you should know what the various DNS records types are. And we've talked about it already. So we can enumerate, and there's a number of tools for enumerating DNS. Let me just zoom into this. 
So we are using a um, tool, a Python script called DNS Recon uh, against the domain cisco.com. And we can see that um, the start of authority, meaning the original writable uh, DNS server is this name right here, DNS, tech RTP2, tech 2 tech one or uh, that looks like L, uh, .cisco.com. Here's its IP. It has two DNS servers with their IP addresses. It has one, two, three, four email servers with their IP addresses. It has an, an A record, uh, which is just a normal record, cisco.com with its IP. It has a quad A record, which is an IPv6 address with that. It has a text record, and it's basically for anti-spam. I can tell that with, with this here. Uh, and um, so the text records say that legitimate email servers are these. And so we're getting all sorts of information. And then, <laughs> this is interesting, um, it has service records. So now usually service records are used by Active Directory, but not necessarily. So this SIPs or SIP, S, SIP, H323, this implies to me teleconferencing systems. So like um, addresses for either video or uh, voice um, servers because SIP is the uh, protocol that manages voice, voice, voice over IP calls. And H323 is a protocol um, that there's an H323 server that sits at the edge of a, a, a domain that will route uh, incoming video or voice calls, not using SIP, but using H323, which is an ITU thing, um, into the proper IP address. And then, so I can see that there's another SIP federated server here, and there's a X, XAMP server and client. So there's a bunch of interesting stuff we might be able to target here. So this is um, just using one tool to do DNS enumeration. Now, you could, of course, use the old Microsoft NS lookup, which uh, basically just um, asks to zone transfer, to replicate. It pretends it's a DNS server. Um, NS lookup has its limits. You probably won't get a whole bunch off of NS Lookup by itself. You're probably better off using an online tool, which will use more than just NS Lookup. But you can see that I'm using the NS Lookup tool and um, that I'm connecting to a particular uh, DNS server. And I'm querying different domains to get information out of them. And I can see when I query this www.cisco.com that against this DNS server, I'm getting an address. And also here, I'm getting an address. And uh, so I can do some querying that way. The only thing about NS Lookup is that it depends on the existence of a reverse lookup zone. Now, I'm, <laughs> it is beyond the scope of this class to be talking about the construct of DNS. Um, and there are plenty of server classes and network classes that talk about it. But reverse lookup zone is basically, I don't know the name, but I do have an, have an IP address. I'm going to give you an IP, you give me back a name, as opposed to a normal DS, DNS query, a forward lookup, whereas I give you name, you give me IP. DN, um, NS lookup is dependent on uh, reverse lookups existing already. Otherwise, it doesn't work. The Linux sort of equivalent of NS lookup is something called DIG, Domain Internet Groper. So we can query DNS using DIG. and um, Again, dig is really cool. It does have its limits. So like here, I'm saying dig at 8.8.8.8. In other words, I'm querying the good old Google DNS server for this domain, any record you can find. And so it is giving me back a bunch of stuff. It's giving me back a bunch of records. Some are um, the just plain old records. Some are start of authority, meaning the original DNS server. Some are secondary name servers. Here's a text record, which is the anti-spam, and some statistics. So those are ways that we can use enumeration to get information out of SMTP and DNS.